Just we have a first off name and title, so it's on tape. Uh, William Blake, and I'm the senator from the third district. Great. So what does this mean, Senator, for the people of, uh, of Georgia when it comes to voting, and how secure will all these machines be? Well, there, it's going to be better for Georgia because now you will continue voting on a touchscreen machine, but it will actually print out a paper ballot that you can read and you can see how your vote how you voted, and then you will put that into a scanner which will tabulate the vote and then record your vote. The paper ballot will actually be saved in a secure box, and that will become the official ballot in the event of a recount or if there's any question about the election. So I think we're combining the best of both worlds. We're combining technology with a paper record of the vote. Will, how does it feel to willfully lie to the voters of Georgia? How's that feel? Amendment 1699 has to do with um, the issue of what that ballot, that the ballot marking device, um, how it's read. We have a situation with the electorate where trust has been eroded. We have an opportunity to gain that trust back with the decision we make today. Unfortunately, I don't think that has been completely vetted, and I know I'm left with remaining questions, um, particularly financial questions. Uh, but back to the amendment. Assuming that we are going forward with a ballot marking device, uh, which would not be my first choice, um, the, uh, the ballot prints out the names of the person who the voter voted for. I understand there is an amendment that has at least added a uh, political party and a, a, perhaps a small description beyond a number of an amendment. Um, that voter is going to look at that piece of paper, and with the assistance of ballots that are being posted nearby, uh, which was another amendment, um, is going to have the opportunity to attempt to check that ballot. That's going to make some voters feel a lot better to have that. Then they scan it back in, which is a scanner, by the way. Uh, it, it, I assume it would, if it reads, if, if it reads the actual names, that would be, I assume, through character recognition. But some of these vendors, a number of them, they don't read the ballot. The scanner doesn't read the ballot that way. There's a barcode at the top, and the vote is embedded in that barcode. If we lead a voter to think that that scanner is actually reading what the voter has attempted to verify, the names of the specific names of the people, and then the voter finds out that indeed the scanner did not read the names that were verified or attempted to verify, the scanner instead has read a barcode that the voter has no ability to determine if it's correct, that voter is going to feel betrayed. And that is going to be a reflection on us. Not me, because I have an amendment. But the rest of us, or the people who vote against this amendment. And Mr. Favorito told us that this amendment, this very amendment, passed this committee, which I assume has some of the same members last year. So I would expect those members to vote yes on this amendment just like they did before because not much has changed between now and then except for maybe who's in the governor's office and so I would expect some yes votes from the people who voted yes last year so this makes the ballot so that it is completely human readable in other words you can't have a barcode that embeds the votes so I submit that amendment to this bill all in favor of the amendment, raise your hand. Wow. All opposed? Okay, that one fails. So, the obvious question is, what what is the vote now? I, I don't have it in front of me. Is it easy to understand? I think so. You have two things on the on the summary. The actual vote is the QR. I got a big problem with that because no human being can read that. 
and no one's ever answered me, why do we have that? Why do we have it? The Dominion Voting makes a full face ballot that they will print out. Why don't we use that? I think this, the statute and the rule indicates that it's the, for, for now. It's, it's bait and switch. Certain. If you're showing them that summary of words and you're tabulating off the QR code, it's bait and switch and you know it, Dave. You have to step back. It's a huge step back. Let's say again, unequivocally in this bill, the policy of our state moving forward will be a manual paper ballot that's recountable, retallyable by hand, and that that ballot will be the primary ballot, that there's a discrepancy between electronic <coughs> information and a ballot, that the, the manual tally ballot process would be the three-minute uh, expression of the voter intent uh, for official election in the state. Long story short, what you just said is that the QR code is the vote. You see, you'll have to read the rules. You don't know the rules, you just passed. Thanks. That's amazing, Ryan. You wrote HB 316, but you don't know any of the amendments. Thank you, sir. He's leaving. Very proud today to have Secretary Raffensperger down to visit with us. Uh, proud as we can be. We're also excited as far as the, the pilot team is, is going out uh, this new electric equipment. Well, if I have, I don't think he wants to say a whole lot. He wants you guys to, to, to do what you're doing. He'll interact with you. He will take questions if you got those, but I want to turn it over to him and tell him thank you for being here with us today. Well, thank you very much. But we're really excited. Uh, we are going to be doing six counties this fall with the pilots with these new machines and we're excited that one of those is right here in Decatur County and that you're excited also. We've been doing demos in other areas. We did one in Clayton County and it was in a senior center and it was just really, really heartwarming to see that after uh, Chris Harvey finished talking about the nits and the grits and how you do all the process, he says, would anyone like to vote? And they all just jumped out of the seat, their, their chairs, they rushed towards him. It was like kids day at the fair. And it was just like, you know, having a new toy. And so it was really exciting about that. Uh, these machines, we have four set up right now with this uh, ballot here, the brown thrasher, what's your favorite, fruit or nut, blueberries, pecans, peaches, or peanuts, those type of questions. But over 2,000 people have been through, and we've been getting positive responses from everyone. Haven't had a single negative response yet from Can both, I make one? both sides of the aisle. And so it's just really been exciting. And so I don't want to take up any more time. I just want you to have fun here because the real election starts Monday. And so you'll be voting for, I guess, three council members. I understand it. And that's really important. And so um, have fun. And uh, uh, I just want to give a shout out also to Carol Hurd because, you know, her job. Yeah. You know, what she brings is personal integrity. And what's really exciting is at all of our 159 counties, when folks are doing this, our county election supervisors, they have that personal integrity, and they just want to do the job right. It's the job of the elected official, or want to be elected official, to get elected, and their job is not to determine which way that falls. Their job is just to get it right, and that's what they're doing here. And I want to give a shout to her and all of her poll workers and all the folks that work for the, the county election system, the county election board, because you really have been working hard and fast to get this ready for y'all. So that's all I really wanted to say and just wanted to give a shout out and just show you that, you know, this is our support. Uh, Chris Harvey is our director, state director of our elections, and he, he knows all these systems. Uh, I'm really excited when it starts out with the electronic poll pad. Who here was excited about it? It's a lot quicker. 
And that's, you know, a Mac technology. This is on Windows 10. And so you just step through the process. You just see what it is. It's similar, but different. So thank you all, and thank you for giving me a few minutes to speak here today. So have fun. And if you have any questions, just, uh, you know, try and grab me. But i got to head out on the road here shortly. But I do, uh, I love those things. Those are really cool. Thank you. Brad, I have two quick questions. Yeah. One, uh, the optical scanner, it yeah. scans off of that QR code, QR code right there. Is that correct? Yeah. And... Uh, can any person on the planet read that QR code? Well, it's all tied back to the system, and that's why we have system checks. So how can you verify that my vote is what I, I put in? Well, because we're going to be doing risk-limiting audits. I have a letter to give to you. It's from Philip Stark. He's the inventor of risk-limiting audits, uh -huh. and it's entitled, Ballot Marking Devices Are Not Election Secure Technology. Great. I have that you for you. Go ahead and, I've, we got a case I've already here, seen that, but Fred. thanks, Bill. And yet you still voted out. for something that's not secure with the Russians trying it's to interfere. It's secure. It so is absolutely you. not secure. But that's your opinion. But no, it's not. It's the opinion of cybersecurity expert and election security experts. Who are you listening to, Brad? It's not them. You're not listening to the voters of Georgia who care about democracy. What we, uh, what we understand is it wouldn't let the poll workers proceed in encoding a card until the very end. It got to a po certain point and it was asking for a party. And this is not a partisan election. And they couldn't, they couldn't proceed past that point, even if they chose a party just to see what would happen. It wouldn't, it wouldn't encode the proper ballot. So, you know, like I said, the counties that were doing the ballot marking device pilot were dead in the water. And there, there were some ways that they can, can fix that. There is a way that you can go to directly to the ballot marking device and tell it you want X number, X type of ballot and you put in an activation code and it brings up the type of ballot that you're asking for. Because all the, the poll pad is doing is encoding a card that says, give this type of ballot, uh, put this type of ballot on the screen. And so you put in the card and it brings up the ballot. Well, there's also a way you can put in a code and say, I want this type of ballot, and the ballot will come up. But then they had to hand mark um, on their paper electors list that that voter voted. So that it became a very you know burdensome process because you had to get their emergency book out, start marking people on the book, and then do this activation code to bring up the proper ballot. And then at that point, people could you know print out their ballot and go to the scanner. Um, so what they had to do is fix the encoder part so that that function could be bypassed. And so we were, as long as well as all the other counties, were given a way that a tech could go ahead and go in there and do that. So we, we did have our tech that just, I think most of them, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we asked them to just do that on one of the poll pads at every um, polling location because we didn't expect a big, you know, number of, of voters that needed an encoded card because like said we were just rolling along, you know, with the paper ballots already printed up. We are ahead of schedule for the March 24th presidential primary and excited that Georgia continues to lead in innovations in voting. Have you had enough time to review the barcode voting machines? Why?
if we don't, if the, if the legislature does not appropriate this money, um, we have the ability right now to force the counties to buy these things. We could, we could pass a law saying that. We, we, we require them to have courthouses, we require them to have sheriffs, we require them to have board of elections, we require them to have all kinds of stuff. So nothing happens that we ask them to do um, unless we tell them to do it or we appropriate the money, we can do either. So just because we put something here now, it's not going to change the fact that we can always change it later. And I, I have met no one around this capital that doesn't think that we're going to buy new voting machines. In fact, it's, it's referenced strictly in the bill. So we'll, we'll, we'll take up the amendments, Chairman Sessler, as you want, but um, I'm not sure that we have to do that. Yeah, because my staff, and I told Michael at the time when he was working for Dominion, I said, because we were having everybody come in, and I said, your system is our least favorite. <laughs> because I said it takes too much time to Well, there's up. so many staff, there's so the much workers, equipment. I said the poll workers hate it, are I'm sure. hate this. Yeah. There's too many cables. and yeah. But they had, at that time, I think they showed us a system, uh, one that there was one more cable than they have now. Mm -hmm. So it was even worse. I can't even imagine what that cable would be. I mean, there's so many now. Huh. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure the counties were like, D don't, don't do this. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, all, it's involved. It's yeah, a lot of steps I, in the process. I, they had to have, um, <coughs> they had to have sold this off of, um, at just cost. Wow. Because um, I think they're making all their money off the back end, which is the contracts and the maintenance it, and all that. The that, and we have to get all of our the ballot and security. The security paper, paper. has that's, to come from them. Yeah, that's a chunk. Because this thing, if your numbers are right. This is thirteen point three seven five cents a sheet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some places where they get a printed ballot for that. Mm -hmm. Why do you have subject matter experts like Winky Lee here who tells you it's gold standard hand marked paper ballot for for uh, audibility, for you know security, and and do you listen to them? Why have it? It's, it's a dog and pony show unless you listen unless you listen to your subject matter experts, which I have not. All these people here aren't here on a cold January morning because they feel good about the decisions you've made in the past. Okay, so. You know, you come up with these great names, Save Commission, Citizens United, Citizens United being screwed by big business. That's what I see the Save Commission doing. You want to give hundreds of millions of dollars to companies that aren't based in Georgia, a couple of them aren't even based in the United States, by the way, and for what? To add another layer of obfuscation? You say, oh, we can audit if there's a problem, but if there's a barcode, you never know if there's a problem. So that is just plain BS on your part, and you know it. And then you listen to people like Chris Harvey, who I have video of him lying to the Fulton County Board of Elections, saying, our system has never been breached. That is laughable. When you hear about those kinds of things in the news, they're generally talking about the voter registration system. That, of course, is the online database that, that our office maintains. It's got the, the voter information for about 6.7 million Georgians. That's where it's got their PII. It's got their, their, uh, their precinct combination assignments. It's got the all the information that tells people where they vote and that makes sure that they get the right ballot when they go to vote. Um, with our electronic system, as you know, the ballots are issued electronically. They're not the paper unless you're talking about advanced voting or talking about absentee by mail voting. And so all that stuff is, is done digitally. And so that's a very, very important part of our system. And that is what, when you hear about news, uh, in the news, I believe Illinois has been acknowledged as, as they, were, uh, they were targeted and, and maybe infiltrated by, by different people, and maybe another state. That's what you're talking about. That's the hacking that's generally going on. Georgia's voter registration system um, has not been hacked. It has not been breached. <laughs> <laughs>
you should go talk to a guy named Logan Lamb. Okay, you have Kathy Cox coming up and saying, oh, we need, a, we need a, an expert, like, like Merle King, the one that Kemp said was great right up until two database servers were wiped clean, and then he says he's like, like grossly negligent. Okay, we're sick of the lies. We're sick of the dog and pony show. We want hand-marked paper ballots. That's it. Think about hand marks. We're going to go over here. Thank you for calling us. Uh, this seems to be their game plan. Ignore. 